Hey folks, Cerebral Tackle with you here today. The other day I was talking with a wonderful viewer in the comments section of my crappie drop shot video. I was trying to tell him about a wonderful way that I like to locate spring bedding crappie. He said I should share with everybody else, so here we are. Now, quick disclaimer, I'm going to have the story hat on in the video. Sorry, I forgot to take it off between tapings. I'm an idiot. Anyway, now how I found this method? Decades ago, my father and I were fishing a pond. We were using minnows under slip corks, but the crappie only seemed to bite every time we moved it, every time we slowly drug it. It'd get bit every single time, leaving it still, not a thing. So my dad said, you know, to save minnows, do you have anything that imitates a little bait fish we could drag across? Well, yeah, I had a box of sassy shads. So we both tied one on, but we put it underneath a bobber like we would for crappie slowly drug it voila this technique was born so let's get to the video i'm going to show you how to do it as many of you already know i'm sure a slip cork or even a fixed bobber with a jig or even a minnow on it is great in locating springtime crappie especially when they're up on the spawn i've got a way you can cover more water find more fish i'm going to show you how a traditional jig and bobber you'll throw out let it settle Twitch it a couple times, twitch it a couple more maybe, let it sit, move it towards you, and kind of repeat the process as the bait gets back to you. It's great in finding fish, but it's kind of a slow process. What I'm going to show you will help you locate and dial in where those fish are a lot faster. What I love to do with springtime crappie is use a sassy shad. Old school, small bait like I had in the video of the 35-year-old bait. Just a nice little sassy shad. Now my go-to head is like you see here. It's a 1 16th of an ounce head here for this 2-inch sassy shad. Love this bad boy. And I'll almost always use kind of a darter head shape. You want something like that that'll help push the water back across the tail more. A round ball head will work, but the round ball head kind of absorbs most of the blow of the water, sending the water out further away from the tail. You want something more slim, more streamlined, that'll force that water directly over the tail so that the tail moves with as little effort as possible. Another thing that's going to help that tail kick as you move through the water, even at slow speeds, is going to be the fact you're pulling it behind a float. This particular setup here, I'm using a spinning bubble or an adjust -a bubble. They don't just come in clear. If you get them from the site, you can get them in chartreuse and red and white and yellow and all kinds of colors. But I like to use clear for springtime crappie. Why? They won't see it as much in that shallow water that you're fishing trying to find those spawners. So what I'll do is I'll measure the depth of where I'm fishing. Let's say you're fishing a pocket that's, you know, I don't know, two to four foot deep. You know, leave about, I don't know, 18 inches to two foot of a liter. You don't want a lot. But what's going to happen is this bobber is going to pull through, creating the resistance, grabbing that sassy shad, and making that tail wiggle real good as it comes through the water. Now, you want to adjust your speed. You don't want to be reeling so fast that it's taunt and this baits up at the top of the water. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure... You reel it slow enough that that bait can stay down right in the strike zone, passing over those beds. This method will allow you to fan cast a wide area. A good slow retrieve is still going to be faster than your pop and set, pop and sit method. This way you can search, find out where those spawners are, and if you find a pocket, you can go back over it with something more methodical like a standard jig and bobber. Or you can just keep throwing this and tearing them up. Now I want to show you a couple of different ways to rig it. I showed you the spinning bubble. You can also use something like a fixed float up above it, a good old fashioned peg bobber or clip cork like this. It won't hurt. If that's what you got, use it. But like I said, adjust the length between your cork and your bait to the depth of water you're fishing. Too shallow, it's going to pull right up behind it. You're not going to get the strikes and your bobber is going to spook them. Too deep, you're still going to get hung. So use the combination of your leader length between your cork and your bait and their speed of your retrieve to get that bait going. You want it to be kind of slow, but this method, like I said, dragging it with the resistance behind that cork is going to make that tail wiggle perfectly. 
even at the slowest speed. Last but not least, a slightly more complicated method of fishing it. The slip cork. Now, you think, if you have a slip cork and you've got your bead and your bobber stop above it like you would with a standard slip cork, the cork's just going to go away down to the bait, right? Not the way I fish it. What I do, and it gets a bit more expensive, is you use twice the gear, so to speak. You've got your bobber stop and your bead ahead of your slip cork. That's to keep it from going too far down and getting hung, right? Switch it around and put the reverse in the back. Then put a bead and a bobber stop below it as well. That will adjust the length you have between your cork and your sassy shad. This way, it won't come clear back and hit your bait. You can leave an 8, 10 inch gap, whatever it is. That way your cork will only go back, hit that, swim it along. And then when you drop it, it'll drop back to the depth that you have with your slip bobber and your bead above your cork. A bit more complicated. I mainly use that in areas where there's a lot of varying structure. Like if I need to pull over a tree and I don't want the bobber to come down and smack the uh, bait, I'll use it there. You know, over tree limbs, uh, a lot of vegetation. It's a more complicated and it's only used in certain situations, but keep it in the back of your mind. You never know when you're going to run across a time where something like that will be useful. And you'll know how to do it because you learned it here. Like I said, bobber stop bead ahead of it, then a bead and a bobber stop below it. That way you can adjust the depth between your cork and your bait, and then in your total depth as well. Anyway, that's kind of a second level course on that, but it's fun to have. There you go, folks. One of my favorite ways to locate springtime crappie when they're up in the shallows getting ready to spawn. The good old sassy shad behind a float. Whether you're using a slip float, pinch, whatever the case, it'll help you locate them. Get out there, give it a try. I think you'll like it. There'll be a link in the description where you can find some of this gear. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you. And you know what I have to say, get you some sassy shads, some floats, get out there and keep it wet.